Okay. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, we sent out an Instagram poll a little bit earlier today uh, asking if you guys wanted to see how to make a bike or a bike helmet. And it seemed that most people came back with the bike helmet. So we're going to run with that today. Um, the first thing we're going to do is this is Gravity Sketch when you first open it, is make things a little more attractive in the workspace. So we'll press the settings menu. Let's go up to workspace here. And we have a couple of different options here, like the warehouse, but I'm just going to go to custom here because I've been really liking this uh, this gradient feature that we have now. Now, you're not going to have this on Quest, but you do have it um, on any tethered headsets. And so we'll click the sky color here, horizon and floor. Let's do sky color and make this like a nice, a nice blue. Um, let's make the horizon. We can stick with, with something whitish with a tint of red, and then we'll make the floor, um, let's just leave that white. And then we will have shadows on all the way. Um, and then we can, we can mess around with HDR in a, in a minute here. Um, again, you can turn gradient on and off and then let's, uh, position, position the flashlight, but maybe we'll, we'll worry about that once we have some geometry in the scene. So, all right, the next thing we'll do is drop some reference images in. So I went around Pinterest a little earlier and pulled together some um, images that I thought were kind of cool. And uh, so we have a couple of bike helmets here. I'm also gonna toss in some full images of uh, some time, time trial bikes because I like the, the gesture of the, the, uh, the biker there. And then maybe even some you know different components just to get some inspiration from uh, the mechanisms and how everything comes together. And maybe a frame as well. So we're going to have a ton of inspiration here for the beginning part of our process. And then I also dropped in some materials here. We might see how that looks applied to the geometry 
uh, once we have a design nailed down. Oh man, we got a whole bunch of inspiration. Okay, cool. So now we have, I'm just gonna press the blue menu button and close that menu. Now we have all our inspiration images in here and they're just sort of floating there. And you'll notice if I drop something in here, these aren't anchored to the scaling motions and movement of the geometry here. So what I wanna do is grab an image and You'll see when you highlight it, you get an anchor symbol. And when you grab it, you get that same anchor symbol on your uh, blue menu button while you're holding it. So I'm going to just I'm gonna anchor it. And then that's going to make it so when I scale in and out or I'm doing a bunch of zooming, um, everything's going to stay locked or anchored to, to my sketch. So I'll just expand the grab sphere here. You can do that by going up or down to change the size and grab a whole bunch of images and press uh, press the anchor button. So... Now let's let's uh let's blow up some of these images and lay out a reference wall. So some of these I'm just dropping in here for theme. Some of them I like the construction on the helmets, and I kind of want to replicate that uh, into some of the ideas that we come up with. And some of them I have here for other reasons like color and and form. Um, in some cases I have an image here. Because I, I might I might use this to sketch over uh, to figure out you know how how the helmet might fit to somebody's head, or I might just use the mannequin for that. I think I can drop a few of these images because we have quite a few. Yeah, I don't think we need some of these. Yeah, I really like, this one's really cool because it has an integrated face guard or chin guard, whatever you want to call it. Maybe we do a couple of proposals like that. And this is a really great side view showing you some of the contact points for the head uh, and then some of the gaps, or I guess the spacing of the helmet for airflow and different hair types. Okay, so because we're doing a helmet, uh, it would be really nice to have a base model. So we're gonna press the prefabs button here under the settings section, I'm sorry, the blue menu button. And uh, let's select the top option here, the face. And I'm gonna make sure that that face is pointing to the right. And I'll expand my grab sphere and move all these reference images to the other side here. I usually like to have them in the upper right hand corner. And the nice thing about these, these baked in models is that you can't change the color of them, you can't edit them, remove them, and they're locked at one to one scale. So now that I've clicked this face uh, on, I can design this helmet with confidence knowing that it's at one to one scale. And that's, that's really great because it allows me to just be creative without worrying about um, the correct scale. So uh, the first thing I'd like to do is turn off vertical lock. So vertical lock is making it so I can't turn in every direction and it makes sure that the Y axis is always pointing up. So we'll just go to the settings tab here and click off vertical lock. And that's gonna allow me to tumble this in different directions. And that's going to help because the first thing we're going to do is go to the ink tool and turn on planar and snap that to the center line there. And that's going to allow me to sketch as if I'm sketching on an art table or, uh, I'm sorry, a drafting table. So I have a little bit of an angle here and it's just, it's a little more comfortable to, to sketch loosely with that on. So let's get some, let's take a look at our inspiration here and get some ideas of what we want this center line to look like. So there's a couple of different options here. Some of these are time trial helmets, meaning they have a visor and then the helmet goes way back like this for aerodynamics. 
So that's one profile we can use. And I'll expand the grab sphere, grab and group it. And then everything will highlight in purple. And let's just move that off to the side. That's one profile we can run with. Um, some of these have a nice little visor that comes out. And then the helmet fits nice and snug to the person's head. That's kind of nice too. Let's group that, move these both back. And then some of them have these, these really long, almost dirt bike helmet visors that I think are kind of cool as well. And uh, let's do one like that. Something that gives you some real protection from the sun. Maybe has more of a boxy shape in the back here. And that might be too big, actually. Let's lighten that up a bit. Okay, so we have some side view profiles and I'm gonna move these ones out of the way. We might use them later, we might not. And the next thing we'll do is press the tools menu here and we're gonna turn off planar because now we wanna start sketching um, freely. Um, but before we do that, we also wanna sketch with mirror on. So let's press the blue menu button, go to settings and click the mirror button right there. And now, now I'm actually realizing that this, these images, they might be better if they just stay stagnant now because we're gonna do a lot of rotating. And then that way the shadow isn't gonna change on the ground there. Now we can also turn shadows off for the ground, but it might be good if they just sit, sit right here in the space and we can access them whenever we wanna use them. All right, so now let's just do some, some loose sketch in here trying to develop a theme for the helmet we're gonna design. <laughs> Still realizing that this helmet might be a bit bit too large. So I can grab some of those lines that we did earlier and just, just shift them around a little bit. And then of course, if you want to, you can always put something in edit mode. To do that, you just grab that piece of geometry and press that blue button at the same time while you're grabbing it. And you'll get this, this big edit menu here and you can grab the bar of the menu and hold with the grab button and pull that out into the space. Or you could just you know, you don't need to have it front and center in front of you the whole time. You can just drop it down to the side and grab these little edit points here and start moving them around. All right, so some of these helmets have really nice airway entries. And now that we have a general form, it might be, might be fun to think of where we add some air ducts. If you guys have any questions about how I'm doing something, um, feel free to drop that in the comments. I'm periodically gonna be taking a look at them and then I can answer anything you guys might have and even demo it here. It's a bit too pointed here. So let's let's clean up some of these hairy lines and pick some of the more dominant ones and start adding some more edit points to them. And 
Let's actually pull the visor back a little bit as well. So you'll notice in this video and probably some of the other live streams um, that we've done that in this beginning part of the process, we're not really worried about getting beautiful, perfect lines. Um, we're sort of using this as an experimental time to do some loose, loose sketching and, and figure out, you know, what we're going to refine later on in the process. So I kind of want to have a more aggressive a more aggressive line here. And there's two ways you could do that. You can either add another edit point in like that and then move, you know, move your points around until they're you have the right radius that you want. Or what you can do is stick with the edit point that you have, grab that and move up or down on the joystick. And that's going to adjust what we call NURB weight. So this is a NURB right here, and we can add weight to it, or we can take away from that. And it's a really nice way of keeping, keeping your geometry nice and clean and minimizing the amount of edit points that you have, but adding tension to that line at the same time. All right, let's see where we can fit some more air ducts in here. Might be cool to have them slotted along this section here. So if you take a look, the air would pour in through there and then it could funnel out through these six ports in the back. And again, that might not be the shape that I want to run with, but it's it works okay as a placeholder right now. But what I really want to figure out right now is, is what is this section line for the helmet? Um, and to do that, I think I'm going to use planer again here and half hold the trigger and place the face in the direction parallel sorry, parallel to the axes that I want to lock to. So in this case, I want to lock to the red axes here. So I'm going to just point the face of the controller there and half hold this trigger and then just place it along the helmet wherever I want to match it up. And now I can do a nice, loose sketch here. of what the section of that helmet looks like. And I have it in blue just because it's easier to distinguish those lines from the rest of them. Just sort of helps keep things nice and tidy. And, you know, once you're done with that, if you want to change the color, you can always expand the grab sphere, grab all this line data and you know, change the color of these lines together. All right, so let's turn off planer. Let's get that out of the way. And um, I'm going to check questions really quickly here. So I'm just going to flip up my headset and see. All right, it looks like we have a question here on shadows. How are we showing the shadows? Are you using layers? And then some questions on iPad. I don't think I'll be able to answer those. Okay, and then can you show how to group and ungroup again? 
So let's start with group and ungroup because that's a pretty quick one to show. So here we have a, you know, a bunch of sketch lines and it's all making up the helmet that we're designing here. And sometimes you might want to use move all these sketch lines together and grouping is the best way of doing that. So to group, you want to grab this the amount of lines or geometry that you want and hold it in your hand all at once. So I could grab a small group like this, hold the grab trigger and press the purple menu button or purple tools menu button at the same time. And what you'll notice now is if I highlight that section, it highlights purple. And that means that those lines are grouped together and um, these other lines here highlighting in orange and red are individual pieces of geometry. So they're not grouped to this uh, group that I just made. Now you can progressively add to a group as well, right? So if I expand my grab sphere a little more by going up and down on the joystick, so I'll go up and grab some of these other sketch lines that aren't grouped and hold them and press the purple menu button again. Um, now you'll see that, that that highlighted geometry, that grouped geometry is a lot bigger. So it's added those lines. So what I like to do is just make my grab sphere nice and big because I know I want the entire sketch. Grab it all at once and press the purple menu button. And now I know that everything is grouped together and I can duplicate it and I can move it around and not have to make my grab sphere really big and grab all those sketch lines. So that is how you group geometry. And if you wanna break that group, it's the same thing. You just grab that, press the purple menu button and now they'll all highlight individually again. So the next question was about layers. So that's a really good point, and I probably should have started this sketch out using layers, but the nice thing about Gravity Sketch is it's all pretty fluid. We could do this at any point in the process. Let's press the blue menu button, and let's go down to the Layers tab here. Now, I can grab the Layers menu, or uh, the Layers window, and drag it out into the space here. And you'll see that I just have one layer here, and I can lock it and I can toggle its visibility, and I can also adjust uh, the opacity or the visibility here as well with this, with this, sorry, with this slide bar. Um, so let's, let's add some new layers in here and start to sort out what we have in the space just so everything's a little more neat. So by default, everything in the space here is on this first layer. So let's start segmenting it. And let's make this the first layer just for references. So we'll put refs in here. And you can name it by clicking the text here in the left-hand corner. And we know that they're already on this layer because everything's on this layer. Now let's call the second layer here, sketch. And grab that grouped object of sketch lines, hold it and place it over top of this blue box until it turns green. And as soon as we do that, we can let go. And now when we adjust the visibility, you'll see that those sketch lines are on that helmet, are on that layer. And I don't think we need these side views anymore. So I'm just gonna grab these guys and delete them. And I wanna start creating on this third layer here. So this is gonna be um, another sketch that we'll do. And so we'll call this, I don't know, new sketch. And you'll notice as soon as I clicked it, the toggle, I'm sorry, this eyeglass went to that layer. That's how you distinguish what layer is active, right? So if you just click right here on any of these layers, you'll see that eyeglass is changing position. You wanna make sure that that eyeglass is on the layer that you wanna start creating on. So now that's how we use layers. We can close that. And actually, we can also minimize this first sketch that we did here and lock it so that now when we hover our grab sphere over this, uh, this sketch layer, it's not gonna interfere with any of the geometry or move any of it around. It's just gonna make it so that we can have it here as reference um, for our next sketch. So maybe I like the proportion and I just wanna change where some of the air vents are. That's totally fine. We can just lock it and use it as reference for our next uh, sketch. All right, and I think we had one other question in here. 
Okay. How are you showing shadows? So this is a great question. You'll see I have shadows here on the ground. I also have shadows here on the geometry. You can adjust shadows by going to the settings menu, going from sketch aid to workspace, and you should have an option here called shadows. Now, if you're using an Oculus Quest, you might not have all of these editing options here. I'm using a tethered headset, so I'm able to adjust shadows pretty accurately here. Uh, so we have floor shadows on, just the sketch shadows, and then no shadows as well. So this is most likely, if you're using Quest, what your gravity sketch is gonna look like. Now, I have a tethered headset, so I can actually use these sketch shadows, but I'm gonna take this opportunity to turn off floor shadows because it doesn't really benefit me to see those shadows being tracked all over the place. In fact, it's a, it's a little distracting sometimes. And so that's how you adjust shadows. Now let's uh, let's try doing another concept here, and let's use a different technique. So instead of starting out with a sketch here, um, let's just start out with a surface, and then project the sketch lines onto that surface. So what I'm going to do here is press the blue, I'm sorry, the purple tools menu, and go to surfaces. Now, if you double click, you get all these different options here. And we're on simplified surfaces right now. And I want to switch this all the way to the right to sub D. Um, so I don't want to really be, I don't want to be creating a NURB data right now. I just want to start off with sub D. And then the other thing I'll do is turn initial tension um, somewhat down and turn our sketch type to point mode. All right, so that should be good enough now. And let's change the color to something a little more bright. And now let's hold the pointer finger trigger on the left hand controller and then press the pointer finger trigger on the right hand controller as well. And each time we click, we'll drop a row of edit points in. And I'm just gonna roughly drop a shape down in the space because the next thing I'll do is put this into edit mode and take these points and start shifting them around. So I'm connecting them on center line right now, and the way you do that is just by taking those points and dragging them to center line, and Gravity Sketch will do the rest. It will connect those points um, across the mirror plane here. And now I can take these edit points and start shifting them around into generally the shape of the helmet that I want here. And, you know, these, these are smooth surfaces right now. We can always, so meaning that subdivision is on, we can always press this button right here and turn subdivision off. And this gives us a low poly look here, which you might find helps you in this blocking out stage of polygonal modeling. In fact, if you use Blender or Alias Sub D, or really any subdimensional modeling or polymodeling program, you might be used to mocking things out like this first and tracking the cores, um, you know, the one, two, three shading values in order to dial in the shape that you're going for. So the next thing we can do is actually drag uh, a vertices out like this and move it down. Um, and that's fine. We can, it's pretty quick. We can grab each one of these individual, you know, vertices and drag them out and, and connect them together. Or what we can do is click this button right here, which helps us select an entire edge loop. And then we can grab that edge loop and press the pointer finger button for dupli duplication and go left and right on our joystick to scale it larger and smaller. And pretty quickly, I can have all those points duplicated at the same time and then spend a little bit of time revising that to get the shape that I want. So now let's turn subdivision back on and we have a pretty nice smooth shape here. Um, let's just call that the shell of the helmet. And the next trick we're gonna do, I actually learned from one of our power users, Simon Wells. And what he did, 
uh, what he did was for an automotive concept, he made a shell like this and then pressed the tool menu, went to the stroke tool, and instead of se selecting mixed input mode or point mode, he selected projection mode. And I'll just change the color so that it's a little easier to see what I'm doing here. With projection mode, you can project sketch lines onto surface data. So what he was able to do is, and let's actually just turn off the original sketch layer here and start sketching. But what he was able to do is draw these really organic, kind of whimsical shapes on top of surface data like this. And, and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn off this surface data and we're going to be left with this sketch geometry with the surface data as the canvas that we sketched on. And we can we can go we can cross over center line here as well. And again, if you make if you make mistakes, you can and want to want to go back one step. Uh, pretty similar to Photoshop, you can click the red back button here or the undo button, and that acts as Control Z. So it'll take you just just back one step. All right, so now let's delete the surface that we made, and you'll see that we are left here with the geometry that we just made. Let's turn it to tune mode, and it has this, this cool effect here. I'm not sure how useful it would be for a helmet design, but it's a cool little trick and something that you can try out in some of your future projects. Kind of gives it a, uh, a structural look, kind of like this reference image here which has that honeycomb structure underneath it all right so that was a fun little detour but let's get back to our sketch here and um what we're going to do now is lower the visibility a bit click that sketch layer that we have and rename it to clean line and we're going to do a nice clean line sketch using our loose sketch as reference. So first thing I'll do is press the tools menu, go back up to stroke and click point mode. And point mode is gonna give us a lot more control in putting these nice clean lines into the space. So we'll start here and each time I press the pointer finger trigger, I can lay down and edit point in the space. And to close off that line, I'll press the pointer finger trigger on my non-drawing hand or left hand controller. And now I can grab these points and start to position them exactly where I want them and refine this, these character lines of the helmet. And of course I can deviate from the design as well. So that's what's kind of nice about this clean line sketch part of the process is it allows you to not only solidify some of the ideas that you had with your initial sketch, but it, it, it gives you the opportunity to take some of these lines and add more character to them in a way that you might not have been able to do with uh, your loose sketching. Again, I'll, I'll keep checking questions throughout um, this process. So if you guys just want to drop that into the into the comments box right there, I'll have a look every now and then and uh, go back and address some of your questions. All right, so another nice thing you can do um, is when you have a stroke or an ink stroke in edit mode, you have these little points that you're moving around. You can taper them by grabbing that point and going left and right on the joystick. So I can taper that so that it has sort of a, uh, a traditional ballpoint sketch feeling to it. 
And then if you wanted to adjust the, adjust the size of the entire sketch line, you can always put it in edit mode and go up to the, uh, the graph that you have here on the, on the right hand side of your edit menu and adjust, you know, the size of this stroke at any point. Everything that you make in Gravity Sketch has history. It's always accessible. And um, yeah, you can go back and edit endlessly, which for, you know, for designers is great, but um, can get pretty crazy sometimes because desi designers always want to change things. All right, so uh, we have one of the vent openings here. And what I want to do is create a stroke line that's completely looped around, right? So we have no open ends. So I just put a, a loose sketch there in the space and put it into edit mode. And now you'll see, now that it's in edit mode, we have an option here on our menu called loop. So I'll just toggle that to the right and you'll see that it, it closes off that geometry. And now I have um, exactly what I want, which is this closed off sketch line for the intake. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's just continue to get some of these character lines down. You know, use some of the tricks I just went over, like tapering lines. And of course, uh, we're going to want to get a nice clean center line here as well. So I'm going to use planar tool with the stroke tool as well and snap that to the center line there and give myself a nice clean center line to work with here. All right, let's check for any questions. All uh, right, so it looks like we don't have anything right now. That's all right. As always, drop something in if you want to see something specific. So let's add the section line here as well. Uh, so we're going to change the direction of the plane. And I'm going to split split this up into a couple of different curves. And get us a section line of this helmet. Looks pretty decent. And uh, now what I'm going to do is basically just do the last part with sketching here, which is the visor. And then let's move to some other tools and try and, I guess through a, a creative exp exploration, figure out what we want the rest of the design to look like for this helmet, because I don't really have any good ideas right now, just sketching it out in front of you. Um, so we're gonna use some other tools and see if we can jumpstart some ideas. All right, let's get the tension for this in first. And that looks decent, doesn't look bad. Actually, maybe we can make this a little more aggressive by bringing the peak down and adding some more weight. Ah, see, weight doesn't work well. There, I'm thinking I'll just add another point in and maybe even adjust the thickness of the line here so that it gives a little more aggression to it. And then grab these points here 
and shift them down as well. And in so that it tapers. All right, that's looking a bit better. I'm liking that. Okay. Let's actually shift the weight of the center line back a bit. Like that. There we go. All right, that's not bad. And now let's start um, thinking about these other components here. So the, the strap for the helmet and um, maybe some of these pads that we see in our reference here um, that make contact with the head underneath the helmet. And maybe some of those uh, more technical parts will give us some ideas for the rest of the helmet. So um, I'm going to focus on these parts right here. Uh, and for that, I'm going to go press the tools menu button here and click the volume tool. So the volume tool is really cool. It's, it, it operates on the same properties as the sketch line tools, except for it connects between those lines of volume. And so that allows you to get these, these shapes that you can't always predict, you know, what they're going to be exactly. Um, but are great for just banging out ideas. Um, so these could be, you know, rock formations, and then you just change the color of them, and uh, or it could even be um, petals for a tree, and you just scale them in different, you know, sizes, and duplicate a whole bunch of them, and then group them together, and then duplicate those, and really quickly you can you know, have a plant mock-up or something like that. In this case, we're going to add an additional constraint to them, which we can access by double-clicking that tool and turning on planar tool. So we already used planar with the sketch lines, and what we're going to do here is not place it, we're not going to lock it to an axis, we're going to place it freely in the space, and you can do that by fully holding in that pointer finger trigger and just roughly placing it like that, and then um, drawing the shape that you want. So I'm going to draw a loose shape and then I'm going to put that guy into edit mode like this and start shifting these edit points around and playing around and see what shapes we can come up with here. And once we have something that we like, we can grab this green arrow here and pull that surface out, sort of extrude it. So I want a little bit of thickness there, not much. So I'm going to pull that green arrow out and ah, just shift these around a little more. And now I have that piece. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. <laughs> Shift that around, grab the green arrow, and drag out some thickness. And instead of starting from scratch, I'm going to duplicate that. and drag that component that I just made over here and slide it out like that. Now I'm not worried about, you know, these edit points coming up here because they'll be under the helmet. We're not really going to see them. Um, so I'm not going to worry about how that looks too much. All right, the next thing we're going to do is the strap for this. So there's a couple of different ways you can, uh, we can make the strap here. Uh, I'm going to use the stroke tool though. So we could use the surface tool. We could potentially even use um, sub D shapes. But for a quick result, let's just use the stroke tool right here. So let's click the stroke tool and then adjust on the graph here the thickness of the stroke that we want. So I'm going to drag it out here so it's a little bit flat, but it's also 
um, you know, to the larger scale of what we can create. And then uh, I'm also going to turn off end caps. So end caps is going to make it so that or end caps turned off is going to make it so that those uh, that that uh, that cap for the stroke is flat. And if we have it on, it's going to give us this nice rounded and tapered look as well. So we're going to turn end caps off. Let's change our color to something else so we can distinguish it from what we're creating here. And now let's sketch out the straps for the helmet. All right. And of course, we're going to take that and put it in edit mode. And then also, you'll see that I meant to turn off end caps, and I just, I, I don't know, maybe I didn't get it. We can always put that in edit mode and turn it on or off afterwards. It's going to add some more points in here. And you'll notice I kind of have the geometry intersecting with the stroke geometry here. And I want to change the direction of this stroke tool. So I'm, I'm going to flip left or right on my joystick here. And it's going to give me these arrows. And now I can grab these green arrows and change the direction of the stroke line here. And that's really useful because then I can change, I can, I guess, make it more natural. So it's going around the chin right now. And obviously, in real life, the direction of that strap is going to change because it's intersecting with a new surface here, which would be the chin. And then there's some tension in between. Um, and going into edit mode and doing that allows you to change the direction of that stroke and, and make it look a little more realistic. All right, so let's group that all together now and just change it to the same color and see what that looks like. Looks pretty good. All right, yeah, that doesn't look too bad. All right, let's see if we have any questions here. Um, what about creating thickness to a surface? How do you do that? Also interesting to see how you cut holes uh, for the vents. All right, we can cover that when we get to surfacing. I'm a concept artist. So. Okay, great. Yeah, we, we're excited to have you try the app. And you're doing an amazing job. Oh, thanks, Edgar. All right, so why don't we address... Um, hmm. Yeah, why don't we talk about surface thickness then? Um, so we're going to start to run into wanting to make surface thickness for this helmet. So, uh, for instance, we have so we have two curves here, right? And we can use them to create a nice surface um, all the way around the headset here. Uh, I'm sorry, the helmet. I've got the headset on right now, so I'm thinking in that space. Um, and so to do that. What we're going to do is press the purple tools menu here and click surface. Now, surface is a beast of a tool. Um, there's a bunch of different, you know, options that you can click here and, um, you know, different geometry types even below here. So you have the difference between NURB geometry and sub D geometry um, and then, you know, uh, low poly and, and just a bunch of options, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to just we're going to stick with sub D and we're not going to worry about NURB geometry right now. And we're going to use this option here, bridge curves beta. 
So let's click that and let's turn the tension all the way down. Now, the reason I want to turn the tension for the surface all the way down, and of course we can see that tension previewed here if we press the pointer finger trigger on the left hand controller. So the reason we want that tension all the way down is because I don't want any curvature in this surface whenever I place it on the model. I'm going to add that curvature in post or after I put the surface down, I'll add it in edit mode. So let's delete this menu. We have those, those settings on right now. And let's highlight two of these lines and click with the pointer finger and drag a surface between them. So really quickly, we can use this nice clean line drawing that we made and uh, not only use it as reference, but use it um, structurally to lay down surfaces. Uh, and so that's really useful because it allows us to iterate on top of the process that we started with. So let's start here. Let's select these two highlighted lines and start to drag our surface down all the way and connect it to the very end, right? Now, because this is sub D, it's not going to automatically snap across the surfaces here when we first place it in the space. So I can grab this surface now and hold it. And I'm not going to worry about shifting it around because as soon as I press the edit menu button, everything's going to snap back into place. We're going to be in edit mode and we'll have this panel over here as well. Um, and now what I'll do is I'm, I'm just going to grab this edit point and drag it just a tiny bit. In some cases, I'm just going to grab it and let go, actually. And you'll get this different icon here, which it's kind of hard to tell what it is because when I zoom, it stays the same size. Um, but it is a black box with a key lock um, cut through the black box. And that means that I'm connecting these two surfaces across center line. And so I'm going to want to do that on the front and the back here. And now you'll see I have tangency. So those surfaces are connected and the surface data is smoothly being interpreted from one side to the other of the mirror plane. And now I'm going to come in here and just move these edit points around, make sure that everything is nice and, uh, and, and uh, I guess relaying the intention of the, of the, uh, the design that I want. So you'll notice we don't have any thickness to these surfaces. It's just paper thin right now. There's a couple of ways that we can add thickness to these surfaces. And for that, I'm going to start to clean up our space here so that it, we can visually see this better. So let's turn off the references. We don't really need them right now. Let's turn off the, uh, the first sketch that we did. And then let's create a new layer for surfaces here. And grab the surface we just made and drop it onto that layer and lock this clean line sketch and turn the opacity down a bit. So we'll still have it there as reference, but it's just gonna be a little lighter. And make sure we have it locked. And of course, make sure that the eyeglass is on our new layer here that we wanna work on, or we'll get this warning here. Okay, so now we have the surface and we wanna add some thickness to this. There's a couple of ways we can do this. One of them is to put the surface into edit mode and duplicate surfaces out like this and to duplicate we'll we'll highlight one part of the surface hold with the grab button and press the pointer finger button and move our move out it doesn't matter what direction you want to move but you can move out and now we've we've added to this this geometry here some thickness and we can grab an edge here and connect it on the ends here um, so that we have thickness to the surface um, and then move this down and it's kind of a headache to be totally honest uh, because there's a lot of manual work going on here so I'm just going to press the back button and go all the way back um, but the next thing we can do is restrict face movement and this makes it a little easier this makes it so that we can just freely highlight this duplicate and it's going to it's going to perfectly duplicate that face along um, the trajectory of the original face, right? So it's it's just going to make it parallel. And that makes it a little easier because now I can choose sort of the exact thickness that I want here and duplicate that out. Um, but it's still a bit of a pain because I can't do the entire row together. So we can add something else to it, which is the edge loops that we were using. And now you'll notice um, 
that all of those surfaces are highlighting and we can duplicate up and make surface thickness just like that. Now, it's not perfect and we still have to come in here and actually let's turn off that original layer and it will be just a bit easier to see. We still have to come in here and grab this edge loop and drag it here and, and, and connect it if we want a totally connected surface, right? So from end to end, uh, it's, it's connected all the way around. And that takes a little bit of manual work to do there. Um, but in the scheme of things, it's everything else in Gravity Sketch is so quick that, you know, this is, this is sort of well worth the effort. Um, although, again, if you have, if you have ideas on, on, on features that you want to see, um, please, please get in contact with us, reach out to us on our website or send us something over Instagram or, or, um, you know, just get in contact with us and, and let us know what features you want to see in gravity sketch. Um, pretty much everything we design in the tool is from user feedback and we take it very seriously and trying to add everything that we can to our roadmap, um, provided it fits into the theme of, you know, what we're going through for the quarter and into the grander plan for the tool. So now we have um, thickness for our surface here, and it looks pretty good. It's um, it's pretty much telling the story of what I want for this visor here. And of course we can zoom in here, and let's say we want to change the radius of this visor. We can always drop in more edge loops here and add thickness um, to the surface data. Now, it looks like I have something a little weird going on here. I'm not sure what it is. Um, I think it's just data crossing over itself. Well, we'll worry about that another time. But that's one way of adding surface thickness. It might not be the best, and you might discover some more ways uh, that you like, um, but it's one way of doing it. So let's turn back on our sketch here and figure out what we're doing for the rest of this design. All right, so we have the visor in and we can always adjust that. I don't really like the placement of this. I, I don't know why I added it outside of the helmet. It should probably be inside of the helmet, um, but I guess it's not that bad. What we can do here is add additional edge loops and move this, tuck this surface in a bit so that it has a better core shadow and these more technical components can sit outside of the helmet. And we'll tuck that below the strap as well. So I'm gonna unlock our, our clean line sketch here and I don't really need this line anymore, so I'm just gonna delete that because we already have our visor built out. Yeah, this looks uh, not bad. All right, and then we're going to start surfacing the rest of this. Um, I'm going to just use Bridge Curves Beta to block in some really quick shapes. Um, but then again, we're going to come in here with Edit Mode and really refine what we want to see. So let's just do the top of the helmet. Let's do this, this bridge here between the vent, vents. Um, let's even add a little bit of surface data here uh just like that and i'm just piecemealing different parts of the of the heads uh of the helmet so that we can come in here put it into edit mode and i'm going to turn off actually subdivision because at this early stage it's easier to see these these really low poly surfaces and understand them better that way and then i'm also going to Put them into edit mode here, and you'll see I have all these edit points. It's way too many edit points. I just want to simplify them and deal with less geometry. And I'm going to come in here and just grab the vertices and hold it and press the red button at the same time. And for those of you that use Gravity Sketch, you know that that's how you delete pretty much anything in the program. And that's going to give me way less of these surfaces to work with, right? Um, and give me a lot cleaner of geometry as well. So I'm going to come in here and clean up some of these guys as well. And again, we can always add more 
more edge loops, more edit points, all of that stuff later. But right now, I just want to deal with simple geometry. In fact, yeah, I'm going to shift some of these around. Okay, and then the other thing I can do here is uh, let's put this surface in edit mode. Sometimes you have to zoom in a bit if you're trying to get something specific. Um, when you zoom out, it's sort of this broader approach, and uh, you can end up deleting things that you didn't want to delete. So as you can see here, I pressed the pointer finger trigger, and I added a new edge loop, uh, edge loop in here, and I want to match it up with the curvature that I have for that section line that we dropped in. Um, now, if I grab this and move it up, obviously it's just going to move that one vertices. I want to click auto select edge loops and grab that entire edge loop and just nudge that up here. And that looks, you know, pretty decent. I, I might even want to add another edge loop in here and shift that guy up and then this one, delete that and, and replace it and, and move up. But I'm just going to go back and forth and delete and move things around and, and figure out exactly what I want. So now what I want to do is connect this surface to this surface. Now I'm going to change the colors to demonstrate this a little bit better and turn off the clean line sketch as well. Uh, these are two different surfaces. I can put one in edit mode. I can put the other in edit mode, um, but I can't connect the two. You know, they're, they're in edit mode at, uh, independently. So what I want to do is merge them together and I have no options on this edit menu to do so. So I need to access this panel right here, which is specific to sub D and it's the hammer and the paintbrush here that button right there that used to be the color wheel button and i'm going to double click that and this panel just sort of floats up to me and i have these four options here crease tool merge tool cut tool and smooth tool and these four simple tools are going to be responsible for how we shape um uh these these sub d surfaces and so i'm going to grab the merge tool here and highlight another piece of geometry now it could be nerb or it could be sub d but when i click with the pointer finger trigger, it's going to change the color of it and it's going to convert it to sub D geometry. So if it's NURB data at first and I merge these two surfaces, they're both going to be um, sub D data. And now what that allows me to do is essentially these are one surface and there's just a gap here. And I can add in edge loops here and just shift this, uh, this data over and connect these, these points like that. And it's a really great way of you know doing what we did before which is drop in these these separate surfaces on different parts of the sketch um but then but then put it in edit mode and uh use sub d to its benefit which is flexibility right and let's shift some of these points around there's a lot of point shifting. <laughs> cool. And uh, yeah, let's connect the rest of this and, you know, duplicate out surfaces or even just take the ones we have and drag them. You can select those edge loops, shift them up and down, turn them on and off. And then, of course, you know, once we have that blocked out, we can test this at any time by turning subdivision back on and see how smooth those surfaces actually are. Now, let's connect these across center line, or we're never going to be able to see what those look like. And that, that doesn't look bad. We might want to simplify some of that geometry, but it's all right. We're getting surfaces in the space. It's good for now. Let's uh, take a little break here and see what questions we have. Uh, okay, thanks for showing surfaces. Would be to duplicate the surface and have select option to close it off. Yep, I completely agree. That would be that'd be a great feature and, and definitely something we can talk to the product team about. Um, thank you. This is great. I'll have to watch this again. No problem. All right. Thanks. It's amazing. 
complicated. Soft head. Okay. What do we, uh, is it possible to have in the same surface soft and hard edges, like creased edges? It so I was going to save this for a little bit later in the process, but um, I guess it could. Yeah, it could fit in right now. So those same four options that we have here, if we double click that button uh, once a you know a sub D surface is in edit mode, uh, we have that crease tool as well. So um, let's actually just let's drop an edge loop in here and shift it up, and then yeah, that so all right that should work. So right now we have a bit of a soft chamfered here, and you'll see if we zoom in that that shadow translates and we have we have a soft chamfered here it's catching some light like that let's say we want to crease that we can grab the crease tool here and you're going to want to take the point of this and point it at the vertices that you want to crease so they're highlighting right now and as soon as i press the pointer finger trigger you'll see that it creases that geometry and that allows you to get these really nice, tight crease surfaces. And uh, I mean, you don't need to have it run the entire length of an edge loop either. Uh, and you can get rid of them by grabbing the tool again and uh, you know pressing that, that surface. And so now if I let go, you'll notice that I have this crease running all the way through this chamfered. And then as soon as it gets to the higher point of the, of the surface here on, on the helmet, it fades out. Um, there's not a whole bunch of control with this tool just, just yet, but for pretty much anything that you're designing it, it, it is, uh, it is definitely, it, it can definitely stand up to the, to what you need it to do. And actually what's also interesting is that tool in combination with, um, with just adding another edge loop and you can get, you can definitely get some really nice surfaces using those two tools in combination. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Those are, that's a nice transition there. All right. So let's turn on the clean line sketch again. And, and you know, now we have our design intent and we can keep, keep moving on in the process here. So I'm just going to take some sub D surfaces. Let's duplicate those out. Um, start placing them just like that. Now let's move the edit points. We want that to be a transition. So I'm going to move this bottom part of the edit points up like so. And in places where I have just too much geometry, I'm just going to come in here and thin it out a bit. Don't need that many edit points. Don't need that many vertices. And let's drag this surface out as well. All right, that looks pretty good. We'll come back to that. Let's clean up this one here. The surface, I mean. By the way, if, if some of this if some of this seems way too manual for you and you end up using a lot, you know, uh, one or more of these tools pretty predictably in your workflow, again, reach out to us. Let us know that you use that tool a lot and that you would like some development to go towards it because it would make your life easier.
So I think probably one of the most, um, I don't want to say time consuming, but um, the part of the process that takes the most uh, consideration is definitely how you match surfaces up together and keep your geometry clean. And, you know, if you model with any other tools, that's, that's pretty much the same story there is, you know, how do you, how do you keep your geometry flowing in the right direction? Uh, and how do you keep your build data clean? And so I, that's at least what I noticed. I spent a lot of time doing, if I'm trying to produce something, um, that's a lot more refined. A lot of times I just go down the route of, can I get some surfaces, you know, bashed, bashed together in, in gravity sketch and then export that to Photoshop. Um, and I think I learned that, um, I learned that from concept artists actually that use gravity sketch. Um, it seems like if you give, if you give gravity sketch to an industrial designer or an automotive designer, which uh, is my background, they try and make everything perfect. They think that the data needs to be amazing. And when you hand a tool to a concept designer, they just, they don't care. They just, they just throw surface data together. They, they want to get the idea out of their head as quickly as possible and visualized in some way. And that is definitely a workflow I've tried to embrace is just Hey, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not paid to be a professional 3D modeler. Um, I just want to get my design intent out, and it's it's worked pretty well. It's actually been really helpful. All right, it's probably time to connect this surface to that one. Let's grab the merge tool, merge like that, and start snapping some of these points together. Uh, yeah, okay. So that one there, this one here. Okay, let's actually go back a step here, connect that guy there, this guy here. Um, let's see, uh, so another workflow that we've seen is, um, again, if you don't want to spend time getting things super polish and gravity sketch and you're already really good at another 3d um software or I, I i guess cad software um one thing that we've seen really be successful is uh people just doing the ideation part in gravity sketch and then exporting either in obj or fbx or igis and then dropping those those files into their their cad program of choice and leveraging their existing skills there. But what they see in gravity sketch is this, this uh, I guess this time savings because they're able to figure out their idea in 3D very quickly and then leverage those skills, like I was saying, in, in, in a different software package to get exactly what they want. All right. That's. Not terrible. Sometimes when you merge surfaces, you'll see that it breaks tangency. And you can usually just select edge loops like that and 
use smart move and so smart move you would you would line your controllers up but head to butt like this and then highlight that line don't click anything and then hold the grab sphere button in and then move it along an axis directly and so that allows me to take that whole edge loop and just really quickly snap it right there um, to the mirror plane and then make sure I have tangency again. Okay, so um, this shader is okay for seeing you know, surface transitions, but maybe um, this is a, a good point to leverage uh, HDRs. So let's go to settings, workspace, and right here use the HDR tab. And you'll notice that there's not much of a change actually in the surface data. So what we'll want to do is grab this and change the material to reflective. And now that it's in reflective, you know, let's find a color that suits it well. And, you know, it's a, it's a little bit easier to see the quality of the surface data that we're laying in the space here. It's, it's pretty good. It's not bad. So I'm going to actually get rid of the clean line sketch and try that one more time. Let's just leave the same color and change it to re reflective. And that's pretty cool. The crease tool is definitely helpful. Let's complete the crease here and see how that looks. All right. Yeah, that's not bad. Could probably even add, add another edge loop in there. Or here, even. And turn edge loop selection on and move that out so that we get a, a nice smooth transition there. All right, let's check if we have any questions. Um, let's see. Thank you. This is great. Is there a way to adjust tolerance of the snap for edit mode? Okay, that's a good question. We can cover that in a bit. Use uh, topology approach to surfacing. Topology approach to surfacing. Um, Dan Dance, Danny Dance, if you want to, I guess, um, drop something in the comments that's a little more, uh, that explains your, your question a little bit further, uh, I can have a look again and, and try and answer that. I don't exactly know what you're asking here, but I'd like to answer your question. Uh, okay, save as you go. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a question or not, um, but uh, speaking of save as you go, let's just say if we wanted to save, save right now, we press the purple, I'm sorry, the, the blue menu button here. Let's go up to save, and then we click save, and we name it. Um, you know, I'm going to exit out right here, but another quick thing to notice uh, here is that, you know, we have a little cloud icon next to that floppy disk. And that let, lets me know that I'm actually saving to cloud. So you'll see an option here, save local or save to cloud. So you just swap left and right and choose between the two. If you save to cloud, what that is, is landingpad.com. So that's our cloud platform. And for somebody with a tethered headset, you might not see the, the use of using uh, landingpad.com. And, and that totally makes sense. Um, but for somebody that's using an untethered headset, like an Oculus Quest, landing pad is by far the easiest way of getting stuff in and out of gravity sketch on and off of your headset because you don't need to plug it in you just go to uh you know your account and then you can view things download things um store reference images uh it's basically a google drive for um gravity sketch and it's it's super helpful if you're on an untethered headset um so if you haven't tried that out give that a try uh let us know what you think and uh yeah it should be helpful all right, let's let's piece together the rest of this helmet really quickly. So, or as quick as I as quick as quick as I can. So, uh, let's drop these edit lines like that. Connect these points. Sorry if you guys can hear my the the trigger on my controller squeaking. I have been using this Rift S a lot, and I think the hinge is going bad. Okay, 
uh, that's pretty decent. What I'm going to do is actually kick out this second row here a bit so that it has a bit of a chamfered effect. And actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go press back on that and move these points up a little bit. And turn off subdivision because, as we know, for tracking one, two, three values, it's easier if I turn that off. And then also, just to see things a little bit better, I'm going to turn on shadows again. And I'm going to just change the placement of um, the flashlight here. And that's going to help me understand uh, the relationship of these, uh, of the surface here, so that I'm able to transition these surfaces smoothly. All right, so that's looking pretty good. It's not bad. Not sure what I'm doing here, but we can fix that surface like that. All right, and we'll uh, we'll check questions again here in a in a second. I don't want to keep you guys waiting. I'm sorry about that. Just want to progress the surfaces a little more. Oh, um, somebody asked a question on snap surface. Uh, I'm sorry, snap tolerance when in edit mode, and um, so we can cover that right now. Slap uh, snap tolerance. Let me just draw it out so it's a little more visual. Um, okay, free like that. Okay, so snap tolerance actually has to do with, as, as far as I can tell, um, we can we can ask the engineers for a better definition here, but snap tolerance has to do with how far you are zoomed in, right? So this is what I was mentioning a little bit uh, ago is if I'm zoomed out right here and I'm trying to snap uh, an edit point to another edit point from this distance, it's going to be a lot more difficult, right? Uh, and 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 it kind of makes sense, right? You're you're zoomed out, so you're viewing it from this distance, and you're not really precisely focusing on that point. However, if I zoom in to this next, uh, I guess level here, I'm looking at those two points that I'm trying to snap together a lot closer, right, than I was back here. And because of that, like the sphere of influence is a lot closer. And it makes it it makes it easier uh, for me to snap those two points together. So I hope that answers your question, at least from a designer's background. That's the best way that I'm able to explain it. Um, but if you're having trouble getting something exactly the way you want it, try and use both of these, you know, uh, grab triggers on the side here and just zoom in a little bit closer. Get closer to what you're trying to manipulate here and uh, and and give that a shot. Um, the, another thing I want to show you guys is uh, if we go back to that other menu, so double click the uh, paintbrush and hammer, uh, we have the cut tool here. And the cut tool allows us to just drop in vertices anywhere, which is really great. We don't have to add an entire edge loop of data into you know a, an already complicated surface here. We can just add you know individual lines like that. And you know let's turn smoothing on. It's not the worst thing in the world either for surfacing if we just drop an edge, a, a random edge in here, uh, which you think it would be. Um, and it, it just makes life so much easier. And another thing that it's good for is like, let's say we wanted to, um, here, let's grab that and, and put one up here. Let's say we wanted to change the trajectory of some data, right? So I can come in here and delete that line and create a new one here. And now our edge loop runs along like this, rather than you know, uh, you know what it was before. And then I can come in here and delete the rest of this data. And really, it's actually no difference. If I just lower it down like this, we're we're back to where we were before. 
Um, so yeah, you can use you can use the cut tool to do things like that. It's super useful. Uh, give it a try. Okay, so we're a little bit further here with with our helmet, not not a lot further. And uh, I'm trying to think of what to show next here. Okay. Well, I guess we can um, we can start to add. Well, actually, let's turn on what we already have built so that we can adjust or evaluate this a bit better. So let's create a new surface here and let's call this details. And um, let's grab some of the stuff that we have on that clean line sketch and drop it here. So then that way we don't need to have that, that layer on and have our details. We can minimize that layer and have a more accurate look at what we're, what we're doing here. So, all right, this looks uh, not, not that bad. Let's shift some things around so that they fit a bit better. And um, let's start adding some detail stuff here, right? So we can, oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to add a chamfered here, connecting the helmet to the visor below here, because right now this just kind of looks like two surfaces lazily put, uh, to put together. And it would be nice to have a little more detail in there. So I'm gonna shift this entire part of the helmet up. And now I have some space. And then the next thing I'll do is put it into edit mode, turn on that auto edge loop and grab, press the pointer finger and uh, go left on the joystick. And so now it looks almost as if I, I, uh, I took away some geometry here, but actually what this is, is just two separate points. So we have a point here that we made smaller and then we have our original point here. And um, there's there's quite a distance between you know this row of edge loops and that row. So it's creating a, a, a pretty large radius. So the next thing I'll do is just drop another edit row in there. And I'm gonna lower that and another one here. And now I have a much tighter radius there uh, to work with. So now let's turn off edge loops and let's add a crease here. All right, and we can actually pull that back from the visor a bit, and that might look kind of interesting to have it peel back from the visor. And then in these other places, we can shift it out. And in this place, we can shift it up and out. Like that. All right, that looks not bad. And just because I don't want all that data overhanging, I'm going to add another edge loop and then delete this really far drawn edge loop that, that I made a couple, couple minutes ago. All right, 
And then let's add a crease here and connect that. All right, just because um, you know we've been doing this stream for a bit of time right now, um, and I'm, I'm sure some people are going to want to hop off here, uh, or already have hopped off. Um, I'm just going to show you another another workflow trick that I think is really useful um, that doesn't have to do with surfacing. So really quickly, I'm just going to drop uh, some crisp edges in there because I think it might look a bit better. All right. Yep, just like that. And um, so let's say this is all the further that we actually wanted to go with, you know, modeling in Gravity Sketch. Um, maybe we want to come in here and change some of these, you know, colors so that they're a little more bright. Um, and then you can add all sorts of detail work, but let's say this is all we wanted to do. Uh, and now we want to leverage Photoshop because that is our tool of choice. We're really great with Photoshop and that's all the work uh, that our manager expects is from Photoshop, basically 2D images. What we can do here is press the blue menu button, go to settings, I'm sorry, go to save, and then click take a screenshot. So click that screenshot button there. And now we have this panel that has that becomes our left hand controller. And we can adjust field of view with this uh, the vertical slider here. We can adjust depth of field with the horizontal slider. Um, we can have a square format. We can preview that depth of field. Uh, as far as I know, this is the only program that gives you like a heat map um, of where depth of field is being placed. It, there, it could be in other programs, just from the programs that I've used. And then you can also use Add Quad in Sketch. So when I take a picture now, it will stay in my environment. I can use it as reference. I can sketch over it. Um, and then, of course, you have Show UI here. So uh, you can take pictures of, um, I guess in this case, what would be useful is, is knowing where the axes are. Um, or you can turn off the Show UI and just you know have your controllers in the, uh, not shown in the space. Um, so that's a really useful tool. And it also... Oh, I'm sorry, you have transparent background here as well, which is really useful because now you can take this picture and add your own background in Photoshop and, again, leverage all the great skills that you have in 2D um, with those programs. So um, that's, that's pretty much it here. If you wanted to export, you can go to Save as well and click Export, Export OBJ. You can choose you know, double or single-sided geometry, a render mesh. There's a bunch of different options here. Same with F FBX. And then uh, IGES is pretty simple. Um, it pretty much just allows you to choose the rotation and, and direction that you want that geometry in. Um, press the blue check mark and you can export it just like that. It's really simple. Um, so I'm going to continue to add some, some details here. I'm going to keep checking periodically with the questions. Uh, I think, you know, let me check the time right now. Uh, what do we have here? Just a reminder, I believe typology is avoiding triangular surfaces as hard connect. Okay, so sorry for the confusion. Uh, what does adding ribbed raised texture? Okay, I'm, I'm really liking the questions, Danny, uh, Danny Dance. Um, so, I, okay, so uh, let's, let's first talk about that typology question. Um, obviously good typology is, is having, you know, squares, just really clean data where everything is, is gridded in that, in that manner. You can have, um, actually that's kind of the amazing thing about the cut tool is you can have ugly typology, right? You can have a triangle in here. I mean, you can even grab that triangle and duplicate it out like this. Um, and it's fine it's really not that much of a problem um this is this is more of a of a free space to to lay down surfaces try out ideas um we we don't actually expect you to have really clean geometry if you don't want to so um yeah it's really up to you um as as the designer and the 
I guess, de facto modeler as well to uh, to choose how clean or messy you want your geometry. Um, as far as the the visor here, I'm not sure uh, about the question of of um, texture, but I do want to show you guys something. So in Photoshop a little earlier, I uh, took the time to well, actually, I was looking at this bike here, and it's just got the coolest paint job on it. I mean, it's this this matte paint and uh, this triangular kind of futuristic um, paint job. And so I wanted to create something like that as a material. In Photoshop, it's pretty ugly, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's basically just a uh, 1080 by 1080 Photoshop file that I saved as a, a JPEG, laid some brush strokes down. And what we can do is we can apply this to the, uh, to, well, to any surface by putting the surface, uh, I'm sorry, the picture or the reference image in the space, grabbing um, whatever surface we want to change that to, and while holding that surface, uh, press the color wheel button. And, you know, of course you can change your color, you can change your materials, but you can also select those images and change it to them. So you can't do that with sub D, which is what we created there, but you can do it on pretty much any other geometry here. Uh, so we can, yeah, we can texture the, the strap that, uh, or we can texture the, uh, the planar tool that um or you know pretty pretty much anything else other than sub d data and so that's a pretty cool feature in fact uh even if we wanted to take surface data and it was nerve data not sub d but nerve data and um sorry drag something out here you know we can texture it the very same way and you know it doesn't look bad uh there's definitely some experimentation with it and it's not like a fully flushed out feature but it's a great way of adding just a little bit more detail a little more realism to a gravity sketch model. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty helpful. So, and then you can delete that from your space. And, uh, you know, of course I see it down here. <laughs> I mean, you can also do it with regular reference images, right? So that, that bike sketch can become something that's textured there. And uh, it works better for some things than others, but uh, yeah, just give it a shot, see if it works for you. So, like I said, I'm gonna continue to drop in some, some uh, some details here. I'm kind of tired of surfacing, so um, let's just go forward with uh, with detail, because detail is very easy to do in Gravity Sketch. So let's yeah, let's go through and do that. I mean, we might we might do a little more surfacing, so I don't want to completely turn away from surfacing.
Okay, so here's another thing. I'm trying to use smart move right now, and uh, I really don't want to move in random directions. I want to move just on X, Y, and Z. But you'll notice if I align my controllers, I get this gray line here, which lets me know that smart move is enabled. But it's um, it's not X, Y, and Z. It's just a random direction, and I know that because the the line is colored in gray. So if we go to settings, sketch aid, and smart move here, we have uh, three three clicks along this this slider here. So we have all directions, X, Y, and Z, and then off. I want it on, but I just want it in X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to turn it to that middle section right there. And now whenever I put this in edit mode and I grab that vertices, it's only going to click in to uh, the right direction whenever it's locked in with X, Y, or Z. And that's going to help me just ensure that I'm moving things along those axes. All right, so this is another, uh, um, this is something I, I actually kind of wanted to, to, or it's an idea that I had whenever I was looking at reference uh, images for this uh, earlier in the day, is uh, I saw this speaker here, and uh, I think it's from Sony, and it just sort of hangs around your neck, and I thought, that's actually a really interesting idea for um, an airbag, right? Is something that whenever you go mountain biking, you just toss it around your neck, it's pretty lightweight, um, and then maybe it has some some features built in, and then whenever you have a crash, it actually just really quickly inflates uh, an airbag just just around the, uh, the side of your head and around your neck, right? So you don't get any serious uh, whiplash, um, because you have your helmet, and if you bought a good mountain bike helmet, then, I mean, you, you should be good. Um, but yeah, I thought that was something that we could mock up really quick here, and I, I mean, I sort of just explain the idea with one tool, which is, uh, you know, uh, the stroke tool here, but we can mock this up pretty quickly. And, uh, let's do that by going to primitive shapes, uh, subdivision objects, and, uh, let's just stick with a, a primitive cube here and drop that in the space like this. And let's just delete this face, drag these surfaces, or I'm sorry, those edit points over there. And then let's use this other face to drag out something that would look um, like what we just discussed. And actually, I'm going to shrink it a little bit by grabbing the whole thing and pressing left on the, on the drawing hand. So what I was thinking about is something that has, you know, three components here. So... You have maybe an airbag here, an airbag back here, and then um, just some connection here in the middle as well. So let's make this part bigger. And sorry if you guys can hear my phone going off. It's uh, almost time to for elections here in the states and. Um, getting scam calls like every five minutes nowadays. I'm just gonna hang that up really quick. Okay, and yeah, we have the, the blocking in phase for that now and we can turn subdivision on and begin to add some edge loops on the ends here to tighten up that shape. And then can add some edge loops here. And then also crease some of these sections. And actually, I'm going to delete this edge loop. It doesn't really need to be there. And let's change the color to white. And now we can sketch out what this would look like um, if it were inflated by dropping in another cube here. Let's make this orange. 
and let's connect the face here and subdivision on and that could be what the airbag looks like when it's inflated maybe that's where it connects to the little air cartridge And then let's just duplicate that so we're not making a whole bunch of stuff. And maybe this one sort of pops out from the top there. And uh, you'll notice it's not mirrored on the other side. It's because it's um, it's a sub-D object, right? So, for instance, anything, these are stroke tools that we created that with. And they are uh, they have mirror turned on. And because it's not a sub-D ob sub object, uh, it's, it's, it's stuck to the mirror plane, right? The mirror plane is only in these axes, right? So X and Y. Sub D objects are different. Uh, if you create a sub D object and you connect it across mirror plane, as soon as you connect it, it becomes one object. So now if I move this object off of the mirror plane and I start to change it and you know manipulate it a bit, um, you'll notice that the mirror plane stays there. It's still, it's still active, but you can move it off of uh, X and Y and it, it stays with the object, right? And this is only with sub-D, it's not with any other surfacing techniques. Um, and so, yeah, so that's what we have here, is we're not able to put this into edit mode and then turn on and off mirror because the mirror is baked into the actual object. But what we can do here is, because I want this to be on, on the other side as well, is click baked mirror, or bake mirror, and now this is all one object, right? We don't the the mirror plane is broken, and uh, now we can just turn on mirror again here, and it pops up on the other side, and yeah, now we're able to tell our concept pretty 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 cleanly. You know, this is what happens when you get in a in a crash. These air airbags inflate. This is some lightweight uh, product that you put. You know, you just sort of sling over your neck over top of your backpack when you go mountain biking, and you know, it's uh, it's going to keep you safe in the event of a crash. So I think this is a good place to take some screenshots and then close things out. So I'm going to just do a few different angles here and then drop these into Photoshop. And maybe that will be the thumbnail of this video when we upload it. So thanks everybody so much for, you know, sticking around and, and, uh, seeing what we have, uh, you know, here in this sketch session session, and um, please come back for future ones, watch some of our YouTube videos. And if you guys could just do us a huge, huge favor and uh, send a video um, to a friend that you think might be interested in it, um, like subscribe and uh, leave a comment. It really helps us out. We're trying to take the YouTube channel a little more seriously and, and put some really great content out there for you guys. So also, if you have any questions, uh, or if you want to see anything specific, drop that into the comments as well. We always read that and, uh, we'll, we'll try and put that in, into, uh, into the plan for future videos. So again, I really, really appreciate it, everybody. Uh, thanks. Thanks for tuning in. So save and exit.